The Corsican Brothers, from the novel by Alexandre Dumas. The astounding likeness between his friend Louis Perveau and the Corsican whom he met with the Yachio nearly startles Pierre Godet out of his wits. Later, after Lucien had ridden back into the mountains with his friend Griffo, the incident is related to his mother, Madame de Franchi, who suddenly turns very pale and has to be assisted to a chair. It is then that her quick ears hear the sound of horses along the mountain trail, and both Griffo and Lucien leap to the conclusion that perhaps the Gadici had decided to come out into the open and strike at the remaining members of the de Franchi family. Now bring up the ladder straight away, Lucien. And I will see to the rifles. And you, Mother... Oh, Mother. Mother, you've had a bad turn. Was it because you heard the horses? Was that it? If you're frightened... Frightened? Oh, Vegadice, don't fling insults at me, my son. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize, but... But I thought for a moment that... Mother, what was it upset you? Nothing, nothing. But you had better prepare. Don't waste a moment. Nearer and nearer came the sounds of horses. But inside the Franchi house, all was in readiness. Little did they realize that the man responsible for the sudden activity was none other than Pierre Gaudet, who ever since he had set eyes on Lucien de Franchi, became obsessed with the extraordinary likeness between this Corsican and his friend Louis Prevot. And so Pierre had bought two horses, one to ride and one for his belongings, and had taken the mountain road from Iaccio soon after the others had left. And the situation is not about humor when we see the Parisian gentleman rounding the bend which leads to this house on the outskirts of the village. A mild, cultured, unarmed gentleman, confronted by a fort-like house, its windows barred, its occupants armed with rifles, their trigger fingers pressed. Griffo is the first to recognize the man. Madame, Lucien, it is the European. The European? Aye, the man who spoke to Lucien in the Yaccio. Look, he wheels his horse in from the road right up to this house. He cannot have followed us. We would have known, Lucien. This is all very strange. Well, perhaps it's a coincidence, Lucien. Perhaps he doesn't realize that in this house is the man he mocked. And yet, we might be mistaken, Griffo. Perhaps he really thought I was like someone else. No. No two people could be so alike. That is impossible. Impossible. Shall I answer the door? No. No, madame. Who would refuse him hospitality? No Corsican refuses hospitality. But he insulted you, Lucien. You said he did. Well, he didn't insult me exactly. I lost my temper because he was so insistent, Mother. But now, well, when I think back, the man seemed genuinely happy to see me. In fact, he seemed delighted. It was almost as though he might have mistaken me for someone else. Never. No one could be so like you, Lucien. Nobody. Mother. Oh, Mother, you're not yourself tonight. Perhaps it is the thought that the Kadichi was so near yesterday. Or perhaps... Perhaps because I let Marianne Kadichi go no, free. No, 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 my son. That is past and forgotten. There he is again. If he passes us, Mother, and goes to the next house, if it is said in the village that we refuse the stranger hospitality, why, it is one of the unwritten Corsican laws... Oh, Mother, if you don't feel well enough to entertain strangers, you can go to your room. We cannot let him pass. Very well, my son. If it must be, it must be. But let me answer. Let me. Yes? Is this the house of Lucien de Franci? Yes. I'm a traveler, madame, a tourist. I met your son in a yacht show today. Yes. Is he at home? My son has just come on a long journey. He is tired, monsieur. What is it you want? Well, I've come on a long journey, too. It's getting dark, and I was looking for accommodation. I understand that all Corsicans are hospitable, and... Well, madame, would I presume too much if I threw myself on your hospitality? You prefer to stay here for the night? There are other houses in the village. Perhaps ours is not the most comfortable one, monsieur. Of all houses, I'd rather stay here. If I'm welcome. All strangers are welcome. No doubt you were told that in a yacht, you too, monsieur. Wait, I will make arrangements. 
Three four. Yes, sir. Throw the ladder down. The gentleman will stay with us. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, monsieur. You remember me? Why, yes. Oh, yes. You were with uh, Monsieur de Farci at the inn. Aye, that's right, monsieur. Uh, just one moment. The ladder will soon be down. <laughs> ladder? It's all so strange to me. A ladder to climb to the front door. Oh, but then I, I've heard of this from my friend, Prosper Narigi. Prosper Narigi, the writer? Yes, madame. Let me take your horses. And you need not worry about these any more tonight, monsieur. They will be well fed and watered. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, madame. Narigi is a great friend of mine. You've met him? Yes, he has written a great deal about Corsica, its people and its customs. Yes, and this is one of its most charming customs. The goodness, the friendliness of strangers. And yet, there's one in this house whom I feel is not a friend, madame. Indeed? Your son. I've been thinking about him all day. And that's one of the reasons why I came so far tonight. Madame, it's most extraordinary, but I... I'll have you shown to a room, monsieur. Maria? Maria? Yes, madame. This gentleman is staying. Get hot water ready and light a fire in his bedroom. Yes, madame. We have supper at seven, monsieur. I was saying, madame, uh, that your son is so very like somebody I know in Paris. That is so... not unusual. People are like other people here on this island of Corsica. Oh, yes, madame. But in this case, it's amazing. You see, Supper I... at seven. Maria will take you to your room, monsieur. <laughs> Maria conducted Pierre Godet to a sparsely furnished room on the first floor, which looked out to a pretty garden. Mist swirling through it in the gathering dust with myrtles and oleanders, the charming brook crossing it obliquely. Pierre took stock of the plain whitewashed room and wondered at the strange behavior of Madame de Franchi. When he had bathed his face and hands and shaved and changed his clothes, he opened the door and walked downstairs into the one comfortably furnished room in the house. Here was flowered chintz of the narrow windows, a huge fire roaring in a fireplace of the Italian influence, a great bookcase which stretched across the far end of the room, and a magnificent mahogany table on which was set shining silver and plate. Wandering across to the bookshelves, Pierre Godet was surprised to find that here was an elaborate collection of a family of tastes. The great French poets were represented. Cornet, Racine, Molière, and Victor Hugo. And the historians, Chateaubriand and Augustin Thierry. He had just put his hand on one of the Chateaubriand books when he heard a rustle of silk. He turned, and there, standing framed in the doorway, a remote expression on her face was Madame de Francis. Regal, almost defiant, in a black velvet dinner gown. A novelist is always drawn to our books, Oh, um, uh, yes, madame, naturally. Naturally. You are a little early. It's only quarter to seven. Well, I didn't realize it until I came down here and saw the clock over the fireplace. What a lovely room. A surprise when one sees the outside of this house. Not only the outside of the house, but, well, the other rooms, madame. We were a great family once, monsieur. Perhaps the greatest in Corsica. It is the vendetta that has reduced us to this. Last year, I read a book trying to solve such problems as the vendetta in Corsica, madame. In our case, they will never be solved. Only by blood. I am glad we left the court dinner, monsieur. There is one thing I want to say. Yes. Today, you bothered my son considerably in Egazio. It was about this, uh, this likeness to a friend. Please don't talk of it tonight. We welcome strangers, but not strangers who persist on the same theme. You guessed that I came out here out of curiosity because of this likeness. Yes. Then while we're alone, madame, there's one question I want to ask you. Yes. Have you any other sons? No. Did you ever have another son? I have told you, no. Lucien is my only son. There was never another child. Why? It's just that... Well, this boy, Louis, that I know, he's so much like your son that I thought he might be some relation. He has no relation. We are the only two living in our lives. <laughs> well, all I can say is I never thought that two people could be more alike than your son and my friend. You will say no more about it. Oh, if I offend you, madame, of course not. But I do want to say that I, I appreciate your hospitality and your kindness. This lovely room, the fireplace, the hangings, this 
The mahogany and... It's easy to see that your family has been a warlike one. These weapons hanging on the wall. Yes, monsieur. Evidence of the bravery of our family in past generations. Swords, arquebuses, and daggers. Yes. Daggers? Aren't these the arms of San Pietro? You recognize them? Oh, I've studied my history. There is a story behind every one of these weapons. <laughs> Two muskets here and... Why, madame? This broken sword. What of it? This has a history, too? Yes. Perhaps you feel inclined to tell me something about this sword? Oh, there is so much to tell about everything in this room. So there are far more interesting stories. So these two portraits, for instance. Just a moment, madame. This sword is broken. Only the hilt remains. I think I've seen the other half. What? In another library, in Paris. In the library of Louis Provost. Hold your tongue. You've been fencing with me, madame. Prevaricating. What are you to Louis Provost? Hold your tongue, Cassio. Hold your tongue. Madame de French's black eyes blaze in wild fury. What is her secret? What does she know that concerns the likeness between her son and Louis of Paris? You will hear of this in the next enthralling episode of The Corsican Brothers. <laughs>